Hi everyone, thank you for watching this video. In this video, I have a special guest for you guys who's suffering from disc extrusion, specifically in lumbar spine. If you want to know that whether does this extrusion get better by itself or not, the answer is yes, it does get better. And even though it can be as big as 20 millimeter disc extrusion in lumbar spine. Jessica, my online client who was basically suffering from 20 millimeter disc extrusion in her lumbar spine contacted me four months ago and we started her rehabilitation through an online consultation and online plan. And in this video, I would like to share with you her results and how is she getting on after four months. She was in not a good place initially when we started her prep plan and she shared with you what was her mental state and physical state was and what was her struggle initially because she was in severe pain, numbness, tingling, and sciatica symptoms in one side, and she even got to the point that she had foot drop, and gradually she built up and recovered. And in this video, we have a pre and post MRI picture after four months of recovery. She basically shared with you what was her fear, how did she find out this routine. Specifically, at the end of this video, she shared with you a couple of tips for you who's suffering from lumbar disc bulge extrusion or protrusion who wants to recover and I believe these tips are very valuable from person who has experienced this problem. Make sure to watch the video until the end. In addition, I share with you her orthopedic video that her consultant explaining her before and after MRI scan and it can be pretty informative for you if you're suffering from this condition. If you've never been to this channel, my name is Bob. I'm a physical therapist and the purpose of this channel is to help people like yourself with simple tips and exercise for quicker recovery. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for my weekly update and don't forget to press that like button. Let's get started. Okay, um, what, what I'd like to do, Jessica, I suppose, you know, um, we've been working together for quite some time now and I think there's a lot of things um, that um, people wanted to know from your story is that like you had a severe case of like, I suppose, symptoms and you had a kind of like a scary MRI scan initially um, when you got your MRI scan and it was just like a really a big trauma in, in mentally and physically, I mean, in, for your case, you know, maybe just share like, what was the story? What happened? What did you do? How did you end up uh, chatting with me? I think because it's a very, it's a very, I suppose, um, interesting story. A lot of people has this question that you have had in mind, you know what I mean? That better ever going to, I'm going to get better and um, how this is going to work. What do you mention just now about like, you know, visiting your neurosurgeon, et cetera. Um, maybe just share that. Yeah, sure. So it's been quite the journey, but um, probably best to position that I actually herniated two discs about five years ago. That's when my back um, injury started. Um, yeah. And as far as I'm aware, they healed. So I was on sort of a progressive plan of um, improving strength, trying to train safely, getting back into sport um, and exercise, and actually was in a really good position. Um, so I then decided to take on uh, the next challenge, sports challenge, which was a an event called High Rocks which is a pretty high intensity, it's not CrossFit, but it's, um, there's a number of fundamental exercises that you do and then a one kilometer run in between and it's timed or you have to complete it in as quick time as you can. So there's things like the skier, the rower, um, you've got the sled push and pull, farmer carry, oh, what else is in there? There's uh, weighted lunges and yeah, all sorts of sort of exercise like that. So I was in training for that mm -hmm. and I'd completed about six weeks and it was going well. <laughs> uh, and then after one of the sessions, it was quite a heavy session weight wise. Mm -hmm. I was doing some quite heavy front bar squats and lunges. Um, I just felt sort of when I got home, I'd sat down mm -hmm. and I felt a pain in my lower, lower right back. And I thought, oh no, please, <laughs> like surely not. Um, anyway, over the next couple of weeks, I moderated exercise, but carried on training. I went to see the osteopath a couple of times and they thought it was my sacroiliac joint. Um, but it sort of progressively got worse. So I was thinking, okay, something's not quite right here. But I was under, you know, no one had mentioned that it could be my disc. Okay. So again, I um, kept pushing forward and, and just monitoring. Um, and then I started to get a really sharp pain in my right hamstring, 
which again, you think that's a bit unusual. I've not had that before, but mm. it, I knew there was something going on. But, and again, went to see another osteo sort of physio and they also couldn't really detect anything because the test they were doing, they didn't feel it was the, my discs. Got you. Um, and then I completely lost the function of my right leg. Oh so God. I couldn't walk, I couldn't go upstairs, I couldn't put any weight through my my yeah. toes. So like the calves like like it's kind collapsing. of like a foot drop, basically. Like yeah, very, and I've yeah. never experienced that before. Oh my God, and previously with my herniated discs, I had no no neurological symptoms, just just pain. Got you. Um, and manual flexion. So this sort of felt a bit different. And again, I tried to carry on thinking, I'm sure it'll be fine. I carried on swimming. I tried to just do some sort of closed circuit training and, but knew that there was something going on. And, and actually my brother works in spinal robotics. He engineers um, robots for spinal surgery for trauma patients. So he knows quite a bit. And I said to him what I was experiencing and he was like, Jess, you need to go and see someone, um, yes. you know, quite quickly. And I'd been to the GP and I'd asked some advice and they sent me home and just said rest for a week. Uh, I probably should have gone to A&E, <laughs> given my symptoms were, were pretty yes. severe, but I yes. just thought, yeah, I'll, I'll be fine. Um, anyway, I went to see then an orthopedic surgeon in London, and he sent me in for an urgent MRI the same day. Um, and yeah, I went back the next day for the results and had a pretty traumatic um, meeting. So yeah, I actually yeah. found out that my disc was not only herniated, this is at the lowest level, L5-S1, Got you. But it was, um, well, what they call a sort of complete prolapse. It was a, it was a significant um, extrusion. So yeah. it, it do, you, do you mind the, if I if I share those videos? Um, I mean, just to show show them like what was the level of the basically pictures. I mean, the, the to see exactly how it was because it was looks like for you, I suppose. And they mentioned like, um, the look is big, right, in comparison to what you had before, yeah. right? And what they basically mentioned to you, um, because you mentioned it was a pretty scary conversation, I suppose. Yeah, he um, he thought I had a Cuda equina syndrome, gotcha. which is basically where the disc was sitting in my spinal canal is it was so close to the nerves that supply your bowel and bladder. So he was asking me if I had um, a number of symptoms like numbness in the saddle area, any pins and needles, any incontinence or trouble controlling my bowel or um, bladder movements. And then I was convinced that I, maybe I did have this. Like it was a really quite um, yeah. shocking. I didn't even know what that was. I'd never heard yeah. of it before. So he basically said also that the disc was still active and it hadn't declared itself, <clears throat> um, which basically meant that if it came out any further, I would need probably urgent surgery and he had actually booked me in for surgery in five days time gotcha. so I was trying to come to terms with every, everything and yeah I could see on the scan it was going completely through the spinal canal and pretty much well it was sitting on the s1 nerve root which explained why I had didn't have the function of my right leg mm -hmm. um and did, did you mention about the size of it like they did it told you like how big it is at that time, no, but I later found out that it's it's um uh, it was a twenty millimeter extrusion, so two centimeters, which wow. is yeah, huge. it's pretty big. And I think yeah. he was he was trying to perhaps soften the um <laughs> the the news, but when I when I went back uh, the second time, yeah, he was like, it's it's huge, and even I was shocked. And I'm pretty versed to you know handling. Right most things that are thrown at me but this was life-changing for sure oh, yeah. like super scary um and I was also told not to bend or twist or sit for more than 30 minutes or drive or pick anything up um and I was just kind of left to see what happens because my case got sent to an MDT so it was reviewed by another five sort of orthopedic and neurosurgeons and they felt that it was too risky yes to operate because they thought they could actually do more damage to the nerves in the process of trying to remove the disc. Um, and the fact that I had more feeling in my leg back at that time, yes. they wanted to see if my symptoms improved. So, so then the surgery was canceled, but obviously I was kind of just left in this position of fear, ultimately, Absolutely. of not knowing what was going to happen. Yeah. So Very scary. yeah, that was super scary. Yeah.
And when it's your back, it's so central to your nervous system and, and all of your movement and your feelings that it's it's pretty debilitating. Um, and, and the level of, of nerve pain is, is something completely different to another pain that I've experienced. Exactly. And, and the burning, it was like there was a fireball in my glute uh, running all the way down sort of my leg. And the pins and needles in, in my foot was so aggressive that there was no no relief from it at all. It was like 24 seven. And I, I, was, I, was, I used to sort of stamp my foot to see if that would help yeah. relieve it. And it didn't. Yeah. And yeah, it was very, very real, um, but but pretty crazy. So yeah, what happened um, after that? I, I now understand a new level of, of back pain yeah. and neurological symptoms. Exactly. And then what happened after that? Then I found you. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah. yeah, so what I was saying before is I was told, you know, basically not to do anything. And for someone that is super active, um, that's gone from 100 miles an hour to zero miles an hour, yeah. but also the logic behind, or the method, the method behind not doing anything is, is pretty uh, not, or uncomprehensive for me. So I was thinking, surely there needs to be some movement for blood flow to to keep mobile um but also stay within a safe remit um of, of risk so I was then took it upon myself to just research and try and find some help and try yeah. and work out what was the best thing to do one to stay sane but also how can I heal this thing like back back five years ago they were protrusions yeah. and they were broad based um and they were just very painful and flexion but this was like something completely different, different. different. and this yeah. was just l5s1 but interestingly on the scan the the disc above l4 l5 had healed and that still is there's no protrusion no herniation but you can see the scar where i've got the where i had the annular tear and yeah. that tear is still there but the disc is is like not herniated so I was oh. I was so happy about that, yeah. that I was trying to focus on the fact that I did heal then so surely yeah. I can heal again yeah you had this conversation I think like, initially we had this conversation horrendous. initially yeah yeah that you were saying that so I was trying you to... think it's going to get better yeah and I think because I've been let down by well I felt the NHS system in the sense that you know I went to see a GP I couldn't walk he just sent me home to rest for a week I think that was definitely not the right help. And he said, oh, we'll book you into a, a muscle and skeletal center in two months time. Um, and I just thought, I, I knew I needed some more help, like attention. Um, so then, and I'd had quite a bad experience with a number of different physios and osteos because obviously no one had detected the severity of this, what was going on. Um, so yeah, that's when I came across your site on Instagram from aggressive stalking of all kind of sites on anything that could help <laughs> like disc yeah. herniations and groups anything online and obviously it's it's really hard to, you're almost starting from scratch because of course. you know I lived abroad for a long time as well so I had different um osteos and, and trainers that I work with there to help rehabilitate my back and moving back to the UK I kind of didn't have that anymore so yeah and and when I came across um the Dublin sports clinic for um injuries I just saw some like quite a holistic approach to how you can heal without surgery and there was a lot of um more relatable examples that I thought actually that could really really help and it, it was much more um on advocating movement versus doing nothing so that's when we had first had our discussion. And what, what I found most useful is actually having something, some structure and a plan to follow, even if it was the most basic plan <laughs> ever, which it was. It was like walking, you know, mobility exercises, but it was something Absolutely. over, let's just see what happens and basically just breathe mm -hmm. uh, and exist for, for X amount of time. Okay. Um, and I knew I was having a scan in sort of three, three and a half months so I thought, how the hell am I going to get from this to this and prove to this like surgeon that I, I don't need surgery? Exactly. Um, so that's where our journey started. Exactly. And, and, and maybe just um, in regards to like, for example, information wise, um, because a lot of things that you were asking me, like there are so many things that comes to your mind in that stage. 
of time that is very confusing and is something that you want to get an answer. But how do you find the initial consultation and the our consultation over time? Because I think there's a lot of things that I have to clarify for patient is that like we know as much as we know as a physio or 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 a physical therapist mm -hmm. or a chiropractor, whoever you go. But um, but how do you find the information that we discuss in the consultation initially? You know, because I think you had a really huge fear of doing anything. Yeah, and I think it was also understanding my diagnosis and, and what I'd been told. And and at that time, I didn't have the report. And when I got the report back I was even more petrified than I was of the <laughs> you know just the images yeah. so I think what really helped me is a positive approach to healing versus gotcha. this is a really cool situation you're very limited with options don't know if it's going to get better could take 18 months it's it's a really bad injury basically you're screwed so yes. that's how I felt um and then actually when I came out of um our initial discussion one you actually gave me the time whereas I feel when you're in these consultations with the surgeons it's very rushed it's you know they're so busy but you also pay a lot of money to see them and I was doing it privately so I didn't feel like I got the chance to ask some of the questions that I had wanted to ask um so that was really really helpful but I think firstly just understanding my what's happened like my position and and how I've kind of got there and you you always asked about not just the now but what what's happened previously or what's been the lead up to this so you could understand from a lifestyle perspective how on earth I got myself into this situation um, but also then I I guess that helps feed into how best to move forward when you when you know that and understand that and I think just having um your ability to listen so well but also then reassure me that it's going to be okay like regardless it's going to be okay um I think I needed that because I had so much fear that it then inhibits your your ability to believe that you can heal even though you know you know hopefully you can and I think because you had so much experience with other people that have gone through this type of injury and actually avoided surgery and got better that for me was like, okay, you know, I need to believe also that, and I, I knew I, I knew I had to, but it's very difficult when you've been put in this position of fear to um to really think that then that's an option and you're still contending with, you know, the nerve pain, the pins and needles, the numbness, yes. and not being able to walk properly. It's very, very, um, it feels almost a bit like, a, a you know, you've got a, a, a disability because it's affecting all parts of your life of course so and then I think when you know you've mentioned that other patients of yours have had progressive plans and they've improved and their symptoms have improved and look we can manage it we can we can tweak it we, you know you'll be in a safe zone effectively we're not going to do anything that's going to put you at risk that just gave me reassurance but I think just that ultimately it was a it was like a relief that you know it, it's because you, you feel very alone and isolated with this type of injury sometimes because yeah. I have I don't know anyone else that's got this level of prolapse <laughs> in their back especially at a young age like often it can happen later on in life when you know you've got a bit more degeneration or spinal stenosis you know exactly. or you you know that that sort of happens with the aging process but this was quite a significant injury um yeah. And I think as the I, message that they gave you as well, like, you know, the discussion that you had with whoever you met over the, that course of, I suppose, um, you know, investigation, I think they weren't like really positive. I think it was um, hugely impacting your beliefs about your whole symptoms. You know what I mean? It's hard because, yeah, they, they were, you know, top, top neurosurgeons, top orthopedic surgeons. They know their stuff. They, you know, they've obviously had huge success with their surgeries yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um to get to where they are but yes I think there's that almost bedside manner in a way or just understanding from a a bit more of a personal perspective not just a medical standpoint how this news can affect someone um and also knowing that from someone that's so active that has clearly had this injury from a sports you know um event to just giving some it's quite a negative, it felt quite a negative space and it was pretty, and I think they have to give you the worst case, you know, 
but that worst case was pretty awful as, as in hearing that you could lose the function of your bowel and bladder for life was like yeah something quite alarming i know for me. pretty scary isn't it pretty scary yeah but yeah. i mean i mean the, the the fact is that i mean they don't do that purposely but i think that's the system that we have at the moment and i think um they just like there is an issue with communication with patient that i think they're trying to um improve that in some stage and they have to because i think the consultation that we get be it gp uh, or consultant or orthopedic or neurosurgeon or whoever you see the the stations are it's like 15 minutes 20 minutes which is like pretty pretty um, messed up in my opinion and and there's a lot of people out there who physios or chiropractors there's a lot of good guys out there talking about this at the moment that they have to do mm. something about it because a patient i mean healthcare is not necessarily doing their job as a healthcare to take care of people. Um, is is more like it just a business has become like a business that I wanted to see patient in and out and just give them the diagnosis and tell them, okay, I can I can help you. But I mean, they're not trying to purposely push you to do the surgery. But the fact is that when they see those cases, they don't really uh, want to risk patient health or anything they don't want to miss anything and they want to just tell you listen you have to do surgery this is the way it is but they do not uh, have even time to discuss about alternatives listen for example you yeah. can do this and that and that and, and then maybe make a decision but i think that timing is so fair that you have to um, I mean, I try to really put this out there because the more people see this, I think in some states, something has to change. You know what I mean? Which means mm -hmm. the healthcare has to become healthcare, which means put enough time for patients who paid a good amount of money for that appointment, but they don't necessarily have opportunity to explain and ask. And, and, and I think that communication skills even is not there in some cases. Um, and uh, not I'm blaming anybody, but I'm just talking about for myself, I have to practice and really pay attention to learn these skills because these are skills that everybody learn i think isn't it it's not just yes yeah, but it you feels know very everything. transactional yeah absolutely okay um, and 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 then we start your plan just to go i suppose um the plan was i suppose um how do you find the plan maybe 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 go through that in a sense of like okay the first stage of the plan was like probably very basic stuff for you from what you used to do but it was it was it was something right yeah, and I think the main thing was we were more, the, in the plan. It has the ability to just measure and monitor your pain or your symptoms as you're performing the routine. And obviously, yes, it was very, very basic. I mean, less than a warm up for what I would do normally, but it was so good to have. Uh, and we had maybe five or six really, really basic exercises um, that, again, were super safe. Um, but just gave me enough to keep my spine mobile and to promote blood flow in that area. And obviously I walked like an absolute trooper. I mean, <laughs> even the neurosurgeon said, you know, um, you can walk as much as you like. So if you give me the ability to do something, I'll yeah. I'll do it to the kind of max. So cool. I think combining morning and evening in the plan initially, just having those small mobility exercises and then what we would call the workout routine um, and that was very much every other day so it gave my body a chance to recover which for me was a bit alien because I could train twice a day or or I would, I would feel like you know that was probably too much looking back but I was used to um, being very very active on that sense so but I understood that with this type of injury you have to see if it's aggravated it again because the last thing you want is yeah, for those 100%. symptoms to get worse and then you have to wait longer so I think overall we've had a really good progressive plan over three months because each week we would review it or each two weeks depending yeah, on absolutely how the schedules were okay you found the exercises were kind of like okay gentle but but it has something, um, you know, as a structure, I suppose, um, to follow initially, and you started to carry on with it. And um, then, then, um, like, how do you find the progress, or how do you find those like review that we had every two weeks and just go? Because I think, um, I think what what happened in my perspective was every second week that I was seeing you, um, you were feeling better. You know what I mean? In symptoms wise, yeah. you know what I mean? Or overall, like pain wise activity wise but how do you find those and um, progression or overall like sessions yeah I think the fact that when we did review them we could add in you know something new um it kept it 
bit more varied because I was sort of fearing that I would have the same exercises for like a very long time. I got um, you. I got you. And I think, yeah, sort of knowing when we could try something else, again, just basic, just helped you to keep a bit more focused and uh, motivated because it is, you know, quite difficult to go from what you're used to to a very different type of I mean, I wouldn't really call it training, but of performing course. some exercises. <laughs> um, but it was it was much better than I'd been told or, you know, given any information before. So, yeah, that for me um, helped me keep structured. It gave me a little bit more insight into moving towards, you know, ultimately getting back to full full fitness and full strength again at, at some point but obviously I'm on a journey with this um yes yeah. it is slow. but I think you know I don't know if it's clean here but I had the next scan and that showed that there'd been a really good amount of um reabsorption of the disc exactly. and healing and even the neurosurgeon was like pleased which that was exactly. you know based on our last meeting I exactly. thought gosh I was like oh the MRI bed just the that was that was after like four months four months of the difference between the first MRI to the second one and, and Jessica was it three and a half yeah three and a half months three and a half months and yeah. you know, he, he did say um there could be two outcomes at this stage like you know the best outcome is that there's some reabsorption and there's some healing but he said he's seen cases where nothing's changed in 12 months mm -hmm. um and also some people's discs like calcify and they form you know bone in the spinal canal I remember, yeah that, i remember that. you were asking about that yeah of course yeah but yeah but i suppose it's like laminate to me yeah but i suppose in but your i case, didn't know what it was going to show you so just just showing you this so this is obviously your old scan this was kind of february this is the back of you this is your tailbone you had all of this disc fragment that came out which i was concerned about to be honest with you because it was such a big fragment causing quite a lot of compression so you have to be a bit careful of that but that's a that's a really 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 big disc uh, and the disc material was also coming down here into your spinal canal. But um, if you look at the latest scans, it's really very good, to be honest. Um, so the late, this is the latest scan where really there isn't any disc material down here at all. Um, and just going through, there's your central part of the canal, absolutely brilliant. And then as we come over to the side, you can see the nerve coming down here, just slightly snagging the nerve there. You might occasionally get a little bit of leg pain every yeah, I mean, in your case was like pure, like I suppose, um, shows that there is always um, uh, some hope and, and the body can reabsorb that. And the bigger is the disc, uh, even, um, you know, the, the better the response is. is. And that's the, that's the interesting part. And I think yeah. um, it gives people a bit of hope as well that um, I think um, out of your case, I suppose, based on what we discussed today, there's a lot of things that I think people can pick up from this video is that like they can see that. Um, there's always a hope, you know, first of all. Second is that um, movement, I think, is hugely important for your, not just the physical factor, but as a mental that get you a bit of hope that you can actually still do things and, and not do yeah. anything is going to make you definitely, um, I mean, you, you might feel much safer in the regards that I'm not damaging anything. But beside that, I think mentally can make you really to, um, amplify everything you know not just pain but the fear of movement and catastrophe of things you know like we had yeah. kind of like um a, a good number of exercises that they probably they told you don't do them in 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 hospital but you had squat in your routine and you had things that you're bending forward and like really flexing your spine and those things that probably a lot of people have a fear of doing them but you end up doing mm -hmm. them and and build confidence and trust with it and gradually get you back to some stage that um, i mean you managed to progress to get back to some sort of gym exercises right how did you how did you find that to basically end up going to the gym jessica because i think in the first day that then i was telling you like okay they're gonna progress you to get back to the gym in some stage i think that was a really big long way for you in your mind that okay it's going to probably take six months for me or eight months or 12 months to get back to the gym mm -hmm. but we managed to get you back to the gym i mean with not the intensity that you used to do but with some sort of weight bearing exercises and 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 strength training exercises how do you find that 
Yeah, that was a huge step mentally. And at, at some points I was going into the gym and just doing the the mobility, you know, just doing the really basic, which was soul destroying. But That's to true. actually go in and, and because you're seeing everyone else training and, you know, you know that you're sort of missing, missing out. But I, I think when I got to add in a few more exercises that I would or resistance moves that I would have done before, but just yeah. with a very, very light weight, I think even just performing those movements was like huge. It just felt like real progress from where I was. I know. Um, and ultimately I was building from scratch because you go from doing nothing to then, okay, what can I now um, move up to? So even adding in a few of those um, really upper body sort of resistance exercises. And, and I found a couple um, from what you recommended, like pull-ups was partly decompression because I could hang from the bar yeah. and then actually trying to pull up for the bar was felt pretty safe because I'm not putting any load through the spine cool. um so yeah I've been working on pull-ups <laughs> yeah well I mean I'm, I'm, I'm just saying like that's that's like you know um the fact is that you just get to that environment again you know what I mean which means yeah I feel that I'm part of a community that I can still be there and do my own training maybe not um that intense but that I used to do, but at least I still can go have a routine that I, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I can go to the gym, spend an hour there, do some yeah. cardio, do some weights and do some basically movement that get me just break a sweat. You know what I mean? Because for somebody like you, I think one of the things that I recognized was that um, you love sports and, and you love to be active. Mm. And that was the whole history of your lifestyle. And getting you back to doing nothing is like living in a prison. Like, yeah. and, and, and having this fear of that, I'm going to damage something by not doing it. And I think that transition was hugely, I think, um, um, made things um, in regards to mental aspect of the game, because back pain is not just the physical pain. Mentally, that can mm. be debilitating you, doesn't it? And even I'd say to my brother, you know, he'd say, how are you getting on? And I would say how frustrated I was. And, and he would just say, oh, just like lots of people just love to relax and I'm like or rest and I'm like oh, yeah that's not me like but it was yeah understanding what I could do that would both promote healing be safe but keep me sane because I was literally going insane of course like, it was like yeah. being in COVID your own forever yes for a yes. long time I know I know um, yeah but that's amazing and and Jessica tell me about this that like okay um you got your second MRI um, three and a half months after your first one and I suppose you visit your um your orthopedic then you send me the pictures and you send me the videos etc it was exciting because you see a huge difference from the first MRI to the second one and and I suppose like it was very um liberating for you because you were like very panicky about things and I suppose and how's the fear now because I think you yeah, I think managed to before that scan. yeah yeah, I think I didn't know what it was going to show. And I knew I still did have some symptoms. So I knew it couldn't possibly be, you know, completely healed. And I, I understand it's a it's a longer term game. But I think after seeing the scan and seeing that my body did find a way to reabsorb that disc by more than half in three and a half months was true. like huge. And I think now and that gave me the confidence as well, I think mentally to try and you know in, incorporate a few more exercises and activities in now um and see how it goes so yeah it was almost like uh you wanted to celebrate just like a tiny mm -hmm. a tiny win um a big win sort of i would like... say big win you have to go with a big win honestly because honestly um for me was was a huge um I suppose, uh, a visual progress that it kind of like calmed down a lot of nerves like in your in your body because it feels like, you know, whether this is ever going to get better or not. But the fact is that we know these changes happen like when you have a, a bigger bulge, it's actually quicker, much quicker than a smaller bulge. But beside that is that, I mean, alongside with you were doing a lot of things and you progress to go to the gym and you start to and be like symptoms free basically you know what i mean because one of the things that like i suppose we didn't discuss about it much how's your symptoms you know um like while you were training and doing things and uh, just like um in this stage maybe maybe and um, just share that with people um like how is your symptoms like in comparison to what it was 
Yeah, I think overall it's there's there's some similar symptoms that I had when it was it was really severe, but much less intense. Gotcha. So for example, the, the burning um would be much more sporadic rather than 24-7. Um the pins and needles actually in my foot completely subsided. Um it does come back a little bit, but really noticeable improvement. Um, I didn't have the shooting pain, which was probably about an eight a lot of the time on, on in my uh, right hamstring, the nerve pain. Gotcha. And I think feeling that intensity lessen was just that real um, reminder that the, the the disc has relieved to a certain extent off the nerve. So it's interesting because you sometimes you feel you take one step forward and two steps back with this. But yes. ultimately, overall, you always would say to me, you know, even if one day I felt, gosh, it feels quite as if it's, you know, worsening. And then the next day it would feel a lot better. So it wasn't a straight sort of trajectory of every day of it just gets better and better. But overall, it's, um, yeah, it, it's so much better, much more manageable now. Yeah. Um and I'm, I feel like I'm out of the danger zone. Yes. So yes, that's right. And I'm you can you can basically around. manage it, which means you have a routine of things that you do. And I think by this stage, you've learned um, a, a kind of like a skill that okay, this is gonna be my routine. Yeah. Um, you managed to go for your holiday. You know what I mean? It's like it was like a scary because you were asking me. Do you think it's actually the right thing to? Okay. to yeah, I know, and, and I think like you know, certain question doesn't come to you. Uh, before this injury that you never kind of think about it and you just go and and then you panic okay should i i don't know go for um holiday you know what i mean and do this activity over there mm. etc but i think you had a really good um uh, not just the recovery but uh, experience in regards to that uh, okay impossible is possible you know what i mean and and yeah. you can get better it's just a matter of getting a bit of hope getting me of a guideline and, and clarifying the information. One thing that I really wanted to share here uh, is the experience that you had with Facebook page that you're following. You know what I mean? Because I think it's good for people to understand that when you follow pages that shows information, what was your experience, Jessica? Mm -hmm. You were telling me about it. And I think I found it that is really good to, to share with people to understand that what is actually relevant in regard to your case and what you have to do about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think at that time I was looking for anywhere that I could um, find other people that were going through the same experience to try and understand what could be um, good, like best practice and to help with the healing. So I joined three Facebook groups. One was called like disc herniated group. Uh, one was disc with pinched nerves. There was like a few different variations of yeah. titles, but to me that then anyone can join these groups as long as you're not um, a practitioner you know trying to sell your your services yeah, yeah. so a lot of people from the US and I think there's a lot of um kind of debate around the healthcare systems on these groups you know with, with but also a lot it's 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 really evident that people think that surgery is their is their route to um recovery or is their best option and I just think the education around that is not it's not as clear as as they think you know there's lots of complications that can happen it can make things worse they can damage more nerves in the process basically everything changes once you've had spinal surgery in, in your spine um you know and mm. and some have a good outcome for a certain period and I've learned that then it you know often there's re herniations so and I think it was quite it was opposite to what I thought it was going to be I thought it was going to be quite a good support um resource and actually it, for example, it was yeah. it was very negative everyone it actually made me very aware of how people deal with pain and how how it really affects people's lives and it actually made me really quite worried that these people feel this way because it's almost like they don't believe they can get better they fall victim to the injury um you know they think there's no hope they've been let down for that by the healthcare systems I got you. but it was yeah naturally just a very very um it wasn't a great space to feel more positive and um of course um, yeah yeah, yeah. So, yes it was a 
a different experience to what I thought it was going to be. And it's somehow like, you know, whatever you, you kind of read and, and you go through is, is kind of like very sporadic in regards to the information and you do not get like a, a directional guideline, okay, what you have to do next. And it's more like a, a sharing their own experiences about their back pain. And I find like, you know, when people are um, don't have like a, a clarity about what they have to do, they start to really write down um, things that they feel and, and it can be a really negative experience and that can create a lot of catastrophe and fear for yourself you know what I mean when you read those things which means you you end up mm -hmm. thinking that I'm never going to get better because the, all of these people are not getting better you know what I mean but but I think that that's what it seems yeah yeah and I think that's something that I think people has to really be aware of it not to not read these things but the fact is that I really can recommend people to stop reading about information and and ask mm -hmm. uh, somebody who has some expertise you know what i mean that who can answer your question and, and sometimes you may come up with a question just because that i don't know actually you know what i mean i don't know everything and that's something that is hugely i think to give them a clarity that I can help um all right i'm just is there anything else that you'd like to share like i suppose like you know you had a really um great journey in fairness and fair play to you because i think a lot of people can just give up you know what i mean and just say you know mm. what this is my problem i'm just going to go for it. there's some some uh, i'm just going to take it easy if they if, even if they don't do the surgery they're just going to say okay you know what they told me that i'm not going to do anything because they told me is there anything else that you like to share with people and just go yeah i think i'd probably like to share what i feel really helped on 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 my journey sure. in the last sort of three and a half months to recovery oh, um God. and i think yeah the first thing is find Bob because he will <laughs> help you understand thank you what you've done he'll be a really positive spin on it and he'll listen and he'll give you reassurance and he'll give you um options and and you know a plan outside of surgery if that's the best route for you um and I think having that plan to follow mentally physically and emotionally just helps you get through each day knowing that you can have those small progress progressions and um, it will be reviewed you can feed back when something doesn't feel right there can be changes made but ultimately you're moving one step closer to where you want to get to you know when you're healed so I think that support that ability and, and you've always been available you've you know if I've if I've asked a question you've been super responsive I know how busy you are you've left me voice notes I've left you voice notes like just to have almost that someone on your side or someone on your That's team with it has been a game changer for me. Um, and I think other things is absolutely believing that you can get better and the body has amazing way, ways to heal, but you have to give it the right environment to heal with. Um, and I think mentally, I watched a clip, um, I think you sent to me, but it was like, how do extrusions heal? And I literally watched it every day and it showed like the body's immune response um, to target the area and break down the disc material. And this is what happened. So I tried to focus on that, that that was happening in my body. Um, I think keeping moving to promote blood flow is critical. The worst thing you can do is stop and sit still for too long. Like just keep moving. Uh, also drink loads of water. I got this um, two litre bottle of um, bottle that yeah. gave me my reservation. And actually on, on the scan, and I'm sure Bob will share them, but on the late, latest scan, it actually shows that there, there's like, it looks a little bit more height in my disc. Like they actually look a bit more hydrated, like Amazing. the other discs. And yeah. I'm putting that down to my, my hydration. Um, yeah. Also decompression. Yeah. So, hanging from um a pull-up bar yeah I did that sort of twice a day just for like five ten seconds just built it up just to give the um the the spine a chance to try and you know increase a, a yeah, bit of height of course um i also think the basic most spinal mobility exercises like cat and cow, cow yeah and camel cat camel you know yeah. what i mean basic stuff um, yeah, the, cobra, the hip 90 degrees hip rotation thoracic openings um you know just doing that twice a day just just for like 10 15 minutes was you know a good way to start and end the day before oh, you go you. to bed and wake up um, and then also I tried an anti-inflammatory diet which included um drowning in beetroot and carrots for a period um, lots of like pulses just reducing sugar and uh, processed foods and Absolutely. then I took some turmeric glucosamine Black pepper, because that helps you absorb turmeric, apparently, and vitamin C and vitamin D, because actually one of the neurosurgeons did say that vitamin D helps promote 
well it's good for bone strength but also it helps promote um healing um of, of your of your disc so yeah. yeah that was probably my combination i'd say of um things to try and help so that's amazing yeah that's, that's amazing. Good advice. Yeah. yeah 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 but like um i think i think um thank you sh- so much for sharing that because i think a lot of people um will will pick up those information and and i believe that create hope for people like yourself you know what i mean out there mm. so don't give up you know what i mean because i think beyond um whatever we know about medical and our body and the disc and, and the bulges and all medicalizing part of the whole story there is a lot that we don't know and how um and how good is our body in healing you know what i mean and and the only things that i think really help people beyond what you mentioned is that to just have that environment you know give that environment to your body to get better and what you mentioned that like uh, improving your diet having a routine and mm-hmm. just having a bit of like mentorship you know somebody to give you some guideline you know what i mean answer your question and like literally following your routine can hugely help the body to do the job and and i personally don't claim of uh, being able to fix this issue by following something but with having a plan and giving that environment and chance to your body your body heal itself and that's the beauty of the body yeah. you know and i think that's something that people has to hear much more and more often because i think um, the body is so intelligent in in doing their, its own job and and there's nothing can stop it but if you have that hope and belief i think that's so yeah. powerful you're damn right Jessica, thank you so much again for your time I'm, I'm delighted i couldn't be happier with your results because you're doing really well i think you i mean in this stage i'm just trying to um like coach you from outside and give you very small bits and pieces things to move around and and, and carry on but but i think you have done a great job you know what i mean you keep pushing it forward but um thank you again for your time I hope you guys find this video helpful. If you're suffering from disc bulges, extrusion, protrusion, or herniation, I believe you do have a chance to recover with conservative treatment. And if you never try it, you never know. I help people uh, globally, all around the world with online consultation and through an online plan that can help you to start a routine that you can follow at home without any equipment and gradually build you up and get you back to full activity. If you're interested to get start your plan, you can always book an online consultation with me with the link below and we can go through your case and get a clarity about your condition and get you started right away. If you need further assistance, you want to have more basically information, you can always leave me comments and I will be more than happy to help you. If you haven't subscribed this channel, make sure to subscribe this channel. I really appreciate your help. Share this video and information with your friends and family who may need this information. Until next week, all the best.